it's Chrissy here for part two of the Carbine course as a part of the Return and Reunion curriculum. Um, I said I would double check. It is freecreditreport.com. Freecreditreport.org is not a thing. All right, so you can check that for free once a year, um, but I would also suggest just coming to Fleet and Family because we can print that off for you in our offices and then also check um, your credit score at the same time, which is a good um, opportunity to use that information um, to better educate yourself and be prepared when you go in and uh, meet the de dealership. So the other thing I want to draw your attention to is that a vehicle is a depreciating asset. There are some that appreciate. Um, depreciating mean that once you buy the vehicle and you drive it off the lot, it will, low, it will go down in its value as time goes on. There are some vehicles that appreciate, but it's hard to know what the market can do. Um, I would say that I've met people before that have said I bought this particular vehicle because the value of it five years down the road will be enough that it'll pay for itself. That rarely works out. So a unique, a luxury, a um, high value vehicle may um, appreciate, but most likely the vehicle will depreciate over time, all right? So once you have done all of this, then we can start looking at the vehicle you want. So we wanna make sure we have all of that, our credit report, our credit score, our monthly spending plan. We've got a pre-approved loan. We'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. Then we can go and start looking at the vehicle, all right? So there's some things you want to consider when you're choosing the vehicle you want, all right? You wanna think about yourself and your general driving habits. For example, how many passengers do you normally drive around? Is it just you going to work and back? Um, do you live in the barracks and you don't really drive a car much at all? It's just a weekend thing. Um, will you be taking passengers with you? With COVID-19, will you be able to have guests in your vehicle? This is something to think about. I don't know. I can't predict the future, but that's something for you to think about. Also, how many miles will you generally be driving? So I have an example for that. For example, I stole these from my son. Shh, okay, shh, I'll give them back. So this is a popular, this is not a specific brand, but this is a popular vehicle for, um, for service members, not with the blown out windows. Uh, it's been a rough life for this vehicle. So a vehicle that's big enough to carry passengers, big enough to carry around the stuff you want um, around on the weekend. But I have a vehicle that I drive to the base in San Diego, but I live in Temecula. And this is about $20, 20 miles per gallon. Like not a great number, maybe even more, maybe even like 30 or something. And I am driving up and down every day with just one passenger. So I might factor in that I can spend this much on a monthly payment on the vehicle and then I forget to factor in the hundreds of dollars that I'll be spending each month on gas. And also how, much, how many miles it will get just for me to commute back and forth. So consider that, consider um, the miles that you'll be driving. Um, the other thing you might wanna think about are what are the benefits of the vehicle that you like as a new car or as a used car? So there are good things to both. I usually ask this as a question. New cars, it's like, well, I know exactly what's happened to it because I've done it. I'm the only one who's driven it. Um, some of the benefits of the used car are, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's like, well, there's already a ding there so I don't have to keep it in its pristine condition. Um, but also you might be paying a lower cost um, some people like to buy certified pre-owned vehicles. That's another option that you have to maybe even keep a warranty on a vehicle. Warranty meaning um, if something breaks, the dealership will take care of it at a low cost or at no cost, depending on what it is. Um, a certified pre-owned also might mean that there are it's certified to have less issues than a regular used vehicle. So that's something to consider as well. Um, I would say too, there are times in all of our lives that we might want something that looks like this, but we have three children, so you're driving something that looks like this, okay? 
Consider what your lifestyle is, what your habits are as a driver, and pick something that's gonna work for the situation you're in because you'll be less frustrated. If I have this vehicle, which is fun to drive around, but I got a family of six, this is gonna cause maybe some issues in my life because I'm barely gonna be able to get one teenager in this vehicle, or groceries, okay? So consider that. Um, all of us want to sometimes have fun when we're driving, but doesn't always necessarily work out that way with our family situation. Um, I'm sure that we've all heard some crazy stories too about service members who were using almost their entire monthly income to pay for a luxury vehicle. Um, I actually see driving, I go to all the bases, I'll see some of those nice vehicles that maybe cost about six figures and I'll see um, the stickers on the back that say that they work on the weekend to pay them off. Everyone has the right to choose what they wanna choose, um, but just consider what will happen if something does happen to that vehicle, if you have an accident, or if you have a death in the family, or if you go through something like coronavirus where Uber is not working at that time, or you might not be able to do um, Uber Eats or whatever. So consider, I am not driving my vehicle right now barely at all. I'm, I go, and run the fluids when I get groceries. And that's about the extent of it because I'm working from home otherwise. My children are not in school. So a vehicle might be very convenient and you should buy one if that's something that you really want. But also consider that times have changed, okay? Gas is also really, really low right now. Just from me over here in California to all of you out there lower than I've ever seen it in California. I thought they would pay me for it, like to take it off their hands, but that didn't happen. But it was about 20 to $40 less, depending on when. All right, moving on. Let's talk about insurance for a moment. Now you have a couple of options. Um, you can use one of those banks that is has the military affiliation with it. Realize there is a difference between a bank and a credit union. A credit union operates sort of like a nonprofit, whereas a non-credit union does operate for a profit. Um, that doesn't mean that you cannot use a bank and you should use a credit union. It just means that you should shop around, all right? Expect to get about three quotes and pit them against each other. I got this deal at this bank and I got this other deal through this other bank. And I got this other deal through some other organization that I like as an insurance company, all right? So consider getting three at least. This will be something, again, that you need to take off a credit freeze. If you have a credit freeze, you'll need to do that in order to get your insurance quotes because they will check your credit and they will run that if they don't have it. Um, the other thing that you can do is just ask, do you have a military discount? Do you have a family discount? Um, consider if you maybe have a bank account, a savings account, and a checking account, and you wanna use the same uh, company for your auto insurance, uh, let them know, can I bundle that together and get a better deal? Possibly, possibly not. It might be a pain to move things, but if you're getting a better rate and you're paying less on the loan over time, it might be worth it. Um, and the last thing too, being a safe driver will lower your insurance rates. For those of my sailors who are under 25, you will be paying a higher rate than your older drivers, okay? Um, I haven't had a teenager in a while, but I also remember my rate was lower than my male counterparts when I was under 25, okay? But if you have a good driving record, your insurance insurance rate should be lower, and you can remind them of that as well, as long as you can prove it, okay? All right, that's it for part two. I'll see you in part three for car buying. Bye.